I want you to turn to the first Peter, first Peter chapter one, we're going to look at verse 13. And we're we'll looking at God's word today uh, on, on hope fulfilled, how that we can have hope fulfilled right now. You know, hope we always think about, which we should, and we're going to look at in the message today, how that we need to have hope that we know we're going to heaven and that we know that we have an anchor in Jesus that we can hold on to. But also knowing because of the way that we know how Jesus is in our life, you've got hope today. And there's a fulfillment that comes in that that we don't have to do like the world is doing. We're going to talk about that today. Let's pray. Father, we're just so grateful. We thank you, Jesus, that, uh, Lord, that we're here. Lord, I say it all the time, Lord, and you know that, that you, for some reason, Lord, your spirit, how that you draw people here, Lord, and, and Lord, it is your spirit that brought them to this place today. May they recognize that, that Jesus, that you have something to say to them today. Uh, quiet our hearts from everything that's going on this week. And uh, Father, we'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse uh, thir- 13. You know, I've had, most of you know, I've had my foster son the last couple weeks and uh, um, brought a couple things back to my mind. And, and he, uh, he really loves, uh, I'm trying to get out of my pocket here. He, he really loves, I got these, he really loves Hot Wheels, you know. And uh, wow, they've been around a long time, haven't they? Well, you just can't go wrong with it, just, you know, about with these Hot Wheels. They just, you know, a lot of you had them growing up. It well, it reminded me of something that happened because we're going to look at today the first part of this about if you really want hope fulfilled in your life and you want to have real joy, what you're experiencing, it's not about you. And don't be discouraged. Don't feel like I'm going to beat you up today because I want to encourage you through the message. But whatever you're going through, it's not about you. We get so focused on ourselves, and we don't want to admit this, but in our flesh, in many ways, we're selfish. Now, we don't want to admit that, you know. And so, Hot Wheels, when I was, uh, <laughs> when I was seven years old, you know, and if you had this as a kid, you know, you were spoiled like I was, but my mom would, um, she would have a neighborhood birthday party uh, for me. I can't get this thing to stay on here right. I think I got it now. But she would have a neighborhood birthday party for me, and then at night, it would just be the family, okay? So, so all the neighbor kids are over there, and I got on my, and it brought this, I got on my Hot Wheels, you know, and man, it's great. And then, he, you know, he had those, if you remember, he had those tracks you got to, you put together, and then you could put them all over the couch, right? So I'm being kind of selfish. This is my birthday and my Hot Wheels, and, and nobody else is going to play with my Hot Wheels on my birthday. And so the next thing I know, this has been going on for about 15 minutes, I just feel like, you know, something in the back of my neck here on my shirt, and my mom just jerks me up from where all the kids are on my birthday and takes me in the back room and spanks me. <laughs> what was that about? I, I couldn't believe that she did that. It's so traumatic, I'm telling you some 40 some years later. But uh, anyways, great childhood. My brother and I, we talk about it all the time. We had a great family growing up. But, but you know what, we're, we're selfish. It's all about us. Now, what happens as we get older, we just have a way of hiding it better. That's the only difference. Now, let's read this and let's, let's bring it in to what we're looking at. If you really want to have hope, you will be fulfilled right now today. Let's see what 1 Peter chapter, chapter 1 and verse 13 says. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That means there's a battle going on right now in your life whether it's about you or whether it's about what the Lord wants in your life. There's a battle. If you're here today and you know Jesus is your Savior, the devil can't take your soul, but he can sure come at you in your mind. And whatever he's coming at you in your mind right now, you've got to realize it's a battle. So 
they used to wear these long uh, robes, and, and it's a very simple illustration. If you look at somebody in the day, they would just grab the bottom of the robe if they knew they were going to battle and, and tuck it in their whatever kind of belt that they had on. They were ready for battle. We've got to be ready for battle. Where at? Here's the key. You've got to be ready to even battle yourself in your mind. That's you and I today. The battle that you're facing right now, you might have a wrong perspective because of the way that you're thinking. So what does the Lord say when it comes to hope how that we need to really be fulfilled right now. What is he telling us? So here's the battle. He says, be sober. We've all been around somebody that's, had, that's, that's been drunk. And what do, what do they do? The opposite of being sober, being drunk. There's the illustration for us today. And if you're around them long enough, what do they start? I can't believe this is happening in my life and this is going, and they go on and on about stuff that's happened 10, 15, 20 years ago. And they're going on and on and on. They're still stuck in what happened to them years ago. All about me. It's all about me. If you want to be fulfilled today, if you want to have hope, you've got to get out of that selfish flesh that we've got to understand that we still live in. There's a battle. Because we feel we have rationalized whatever we're going through. They did it to me. They owe me. Why did this happen to me? And what happens with that? What happens with that is last year, the year before, five years ago. And guess what? It's going by this fast. And your circumstance hasn't changed. You haven't changed by the whining and complaining. And we're right where we're at. And time is flying by. And it's done none, no, no good at all. So the Lord is telling us to be sober. We've got to know that the way that we've got to think in this life to have hope all the time and have joy the way the Lord wants us to do, this is what he's saying. This is what I want you to get today. Rest your hope, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now here's what else happens. Let's push this out of the way, what I just said for a minute, because I wanted you to focus on yourself. Now let's focus on what's happened to you in life. Right or wrong, whether you've caused it, whether somebody else has caused it in your life. Jesus is telling, this is his word, speaking to you today, speaking to me today, rest. Rest your hope fully upon the grace of Jesus was visiting a young lady in the hospital this week and she's going through a very difficult time and, and she was telling me, she started apologizing that, you know, Dallas, I, you know, she's a Christian, but you know, I hadn't been praying and, and I hadn't been to church. I said, stop. I said, stop it. I said, Jesus is your heavenly father. I said, whether you've talked to him last week or the week before, don't let the devil Whatever your past is, whatever currently or 10 years ago what happened, and you feel like you can't come to the Lord the way that you, you want to, your, your thinking is wrong. Jesus is your heavenly Father, loves you. He's there for you. If you're here today and you're a parent, you understand that you would do anything for your kids. If they hadn't talked to you in a week or a month or six months, if they want to come to you and they are so distraught, concerned, you, it doesn't matter what's happened. You're there for them. Rest your hope. Not your past. Not what's happened in your life. Not where you're going. Not anything else. Rest your hope on the grace of Jesus Christ. That means the Lord can give you at your age, whether you're 15 here today or whether you're 50 or 60, the Lord can give you today the dreams that you still, well, you, you kind of given up on. See, when you understand that the Lord loves you enough that he forgives you and he has an incredible plan for your life, then it's all about me. Yourself starts to push out of the way because you know Wow, I mean, Lord, you know I've done this and done that, and you, you still have a plan for me? He wants to fulfill you right now today. What does he tell us then as we build on that, as we rest our hope 
on the revelation of Jesus Christ and his grace. Well, look at Proverbs in chapter 13 and verse 12. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. If we want the hope that we want today and we, we want to be fulfilled today, we want it really right now, what, what is this verse saying to us? Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You said, Dallas, again and again and again. It's happened to me again and again and again. And I know I've made some mistakes, and I know it's not about me, but life has just thrown me some stuff that I, I had those dreams, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. Where is it today? I don't care if you're in high school or, or, or 60 years old. Where is it today that you just feel like you've been knocked down? You know, you just, it, it, it's just not going to happen. What, what you want to happen, it, 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 that's the devil. See, the devil wants to keep you down. Because when you're down, you can't do anything for the Lord. When you're down, all you do is think about yourself and you stay right in the situation that you're in. Hope deferred. You know, it was there one time, but I, you know what, too much time's passed all these things. Rest your hope on the grace that's Jesus Christ. He will restore the years the locusts have eaten. Whatever it is that you want to fulfill in your life, it is amazing what the Lord can do if you give your life to it, if you believe and you trust him, because the verse says there, but when the desire comes, when, when you start to believe again, that you are so unique that there is only something that you can do that no one else can do, the desire begins to come back. It is like a tree of life. The tree of life we know talks about in the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation. It lasts forever. We feed off of the tree of life. It's a picture for us for eternity. It's, it's a constant renewal that we live forever. And as we live forever, Something's happening to us that where Jesus, who is perfect, is going to instill in you exactly what you need is an imperfect being because we don't have our act together as much as we think that we do. And how many times do I say that, you know what, we've, whether you realize or not, we've all got issues and you're messed up. I'm messed up. Right? And you don't want to admit that, but it's the truth. And the more that we realize, you know, we, we so depend on what we think is perfect today. What do we think? What are one of the things that we so depend on today is, is technology. We depend on technology more than anything. It, it, if this technology is going to come through, whether it's our iPhone or iPad or the computer, I mean, whatever you do, it just, it just works. It's perfect. Nothing in this world is perfect. I was driving to Cleveland Airport. Got up there again, to, had to take Sean back to the airport because he lives in Florida, my foster son, so we're up. And we're, it, it's really cool if you've been in the airport lately, they, they, where the short-term parking is, there's, there's two lights that are always on. There, there's a green light and a red light. And a, let me explain it to you. There's three, four, 500 parking spots. And if you pull in there, it actually says all computerized It'll take you to what spot's open. And as you look down the lanes, there's all these tiny little red lights above the cars. It's amazing to me that shows that, you know what, those spots are taken. You know how you used to drive around, you used to look for a spot, and drive around, look for a spot. But you can look way, 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 way down. As far as from here in the parking lot, and you see a little green dot that says that, that space is open. It's, it's unbelievable when it says, this is row five, numbers. Six. It's amazing to me with technology what it does. So we're driving around. I see this, this, this green light says the spot's open. So thankful we're not in too much of a hurry. So we drive around. I get to the spot where the green light is. There's a car there. <laughs> and I'm looking at the sensor. I'm looking at the car. I'm like, I said, it's, it's not working. Of course it's not working. We, all those other red lights, green light, the car's there. But what do we think? We think that there is a perfection about something in this life. We think that if we, here it is, 
If we listen to somebody else, if we figure it out our own way, if we use technology right, we're gonna get it done. We think it's perfect. Our way, we figure it every angle, we got it. It's the right way. And then what happens? You go around, you pull down, it's not what you thought. The spot's taken. And you're disappointed. That's a very simplistic example, but I want you to take it into your life. What it is, and what I'm trying to share with you today, is we've got a way of thinking in our life that we've got it figured out. And then we get there, and it's not what we thought it was. We're disappointed. The lights seem to be green all the way along, and we get there, the spot's taken. Where is it in your life that you right now are so trying to figure out? And you're hurt again, you're disappointed again in yourself or other people or circumstances or time is flying by, somebody in high school, something's happened on your job, your health situation, I don't know what it is. But we have a choice, we have a choice to say we're going to stay down or no, not ourselves. or I'm not going to give you some gimmick or three points today, no, or we're going to look to Jesus Christ the author and finisher of our faith. We're going to look to Jesus, and if we look to him, we're more than conquerors than anything that you will go through. Jesus is the one who's going to get you. His spirit that lives within you is going to direct you to where every time along the way, even though you're hurt, even though you've been knocked down, Jesus will take your circumstance and your life, and if you let him and your hope is always in him, you will turn around and you will say, Lord, all the way along, I didn't know where we were going. Lord, I'm so almost scared right now because of where you've brought me, and I look back, and if I'd have made that decision the way I wanted to make it, man, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I I was listening to a great Bible teacher. Her name's Christine Kane. She's from Australia. She, she teaches and speaks all around, all around the world, actually. In most of her childhood, from four different men, she was sexually abused. Again and again and again. The hatred that she had, the bitterness that she had, the anger that she had. She hated life. She hated men. She hated everything about it. She had a choice to make in her 20s that she heard the story about Jesus Christ. She walked down out. She accepted Christ as her Savior. And today, some 20 years later, she leads up the largest organization, the most effective organization for Jesus Christ on human and sexual abuse trafficking kids in the world. And has a great family. Now, is she any different than you? I don't think most of us has been through what she's been through. So we know that her hope, her hope was crushed again and again and again. Many people that had gone through what she had gone through would have checked out of this life many years ago. But she chose Jesus. And her hope became upon him and she realized that as that verse says but when the desire comes it's a tree of life the Lord will take what you have been through and actually turn it into an opportunity an opportunity to where you begin to say Lord I can't believe that you took all this mess rest your hope in it what In his grace. I can't believe you took all this mess and now you're actually, I mean, I can't believe you're using it for your glory. Lord, it's all because I saw you, Jesus, and I chose not to be bitter. I chose not to be about myself. I chose not to lay in it any longer and decided that you, not me, you would pick me up. Jesus is the only one that can pick you up and keep you up because you will fall again. Rest your hope today. Today, I'm not talking about tomorrow, fulfilled right now. We have a choice to make right now, and we're going to close with this in, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17. How does that happen? How, how, how does this, this, this tree life, how does it continue no matter what's happened in your life? And I'm sure that that lady I just talked about, Christine Kane, I'm sure that she's from time to time had those horrible memories come back up. But what does the Lord do? 
in Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. Blessed is the man or mankind who trusts in the Lord. Blessed, here we go, we got to trust. Hope, and whose hope is in the Lord. See, you can't have hope. See how it's worded here? You and I can't have hope unless if we're willing to trust the Lord today. The trust aspect, you got to give it all. You got to give everything that's going on right now in your, you got to give it all. And when you give it all, the Lord says, okay, I see you mean business. I see that you mean, you've given everything over to me and what's happened to your life. Then he says, and whose hope is in the Lord. This is what we're like. We're going to be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. First of all, what is the living water? That's what we've got. There, there is a root system here. It's got to go somewhere that's going to get fed. If, if we are going to continue to grow as a Christian, if we're going to continue to have hope, guess what's going to happen? I don't like saying this, but you know what? You're going to get a phone call. Something's going to happen a week two weeks, a year from now, and it's going to hit you, and it's going to hit you hard. And you're going to have a decision to make. Lord, am I going to look to you? Am I going to pull from your resource? Jesus said in the book of John, he is living water. He's living water. You got to get next to him. You see what it's saying there? Planted by the living water. Planted by the river. You got to get close to him. Don't let your past, don't let the devil, don't let your mind, you rest on that grace, you're going to battle. The devil says, you can't, the Lord can't use you, look what you used to do, look at all this stuff, da, 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 and all this stuff. The Lord can't, you, you're, not, you're not equipped, you're not talented. Forget all that. That's the devil. The Lord Jesus Christ can do anything in your life and whatever you've been through and take it to his glory. I don't talk about it much, but most of you know, I went through a horrible, I don't even like using the word, a bad, bad, bad divorce. It was terrible. I've been in ministry 30 some years and for three years I didn't preach. I didn't do any of that. And I thought, I have my life was over. But I knew what I knew, what I knew growing up, what my parents taught me, what I saw them live, what this great church that fed me all my life and people loved me growing up in. And I knew what God's word said. God can't lie. And if I open his word up and he says, if you trust me, if you trust me, I'm gonna do something so amazing with what's happened in your life, you won't believe it. And I tell people today, and part of my story is like, you know, all I did was nothing. I did one thing. I, I couldn't do anything. I was so immobilized. But I know that if I stayed close to Jesus, the, the living water, if I was planted next to him, that he was going to grow me enough in that fire where I wouldn't fear where I wouldn't be afraid and he would keep taking me through that that eventually is that verse says it can't help you can't help but yield fruit and nothing in your life it will be more rewarding than what the devil took for evil that God will turn around and Jesus will take for good I'm telling you that he will do it if someone had told me two years ago that I would be where I'm at today, I couldn't, I wouldn't have believed him. And God help me as I say this all the time to you. Jesus help me not to mess up. But what I'm telling you, I'm no different. I'm no different. You are his child. And he has hope for you today what you're facing. And the hope can be right now. Your circumstance might not change, but where you're at, 
that living water is flowing right next to you and Jesus is feeding your soul. And whether or not your circumstances change, you know that you've changed. You realize that something's going on, that you've so given your life back to Jesus that there is a joy that you can't get any other way. And you know, even though you might not have that joy going on all the time, there's an underlying peace that you know the Lord's got this. You can't explain it to anybody. I had all types of advice given to me. Do this, do that. This is that, 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 from every different angle. But I knew that all I had to do was stay close to Jesus. And he would eventually take what's happened and use it for his glory. So where are you today? There's things in life that that we don't understand. But you have a choice to make in your mind today. You can stay down. You can feel sorry for yourself. And you know what? In every right, you, 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 might, you might have that right. Just like the lady I talked about today. But you know what? If you just decide, Lord, I, I don't even have the strength to do it, but I'm going to trust you that I'm going to stay next to you and you're going to feed me, you're going to refresh me with your living water. That I'm not going to make these decisions on my own anymore. I'm going to let you make them for me. Because all I do is go around that corner and somebody's in that spot and I'm disappointed again. And even though I thought the light was green, it's red and it's not working. So Lord, I'm going to give it to you. And see what he does. Your circumstance might not change, like I said, but you will. You will. The joy, because you know why? Here it is, and I close. You will begin to have hope back in your life, whatever it is that you always wanted to do. That desire will come in. You'll see the dream. Jesus will be a part of it. He'll begin to make some things happen. And your hope starts to come back in your life because you've decided with your Savior, that you're going to partner with him. And he knows everything about your future. And he's still going to take all of our past. He's going to take all of us. And he's got it. He's got it. He's got you today. And all I want you to know, in the crazy world that we live in today, whatever we see on the news, whatever we hear happening in the Middle East, whatever's happening morally in the United States, you know what? That's no surprise to the Lord. And if that's no surprise to the Lord, what you're going to face and what I'm going to face is no surprise. What he wants you to do today as I close is will you just hope in him? Will you just say in your mind, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself anymore. I'm not going to try and figure it out anymore. Lord, I'm going to trust you. You're going to take my mess. You're going to use it for your glory. And Lord, I'm going to begin. And you're going to turn around and you go, you know what, I... I haven't felt this way and I don't know when. Because there's an underlying peace that you don't fear like you used to. You're not anxious like you used to, as that verse says. And eventually, when you give your life over and then you're able to see someone helped because of what you've been through, man, that's what life's all about. Because the Lord says, our life is a vapor. And whether we die or whether he comes back, we're out of here much sooner than what we think. So I want you to have hope today. And your hope doesn't stop in a good luck or I know you'll get there. I hope so. No, your hope begins today in seeing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your hope begins today that you rest in his grace. Let's, let's pray. So our heads are bowed today. Um, first to you as a Christian that are here that know Jesus as your Savior. Where is it that, and you just didn't, you thought things were gonna be different, whether it was in high school or whether, whether it's your job or your family or, or life just kind of, it's just really gone by fast. 
and, you, and you're just kind of disappointed. Uh, there's a great verse that says, hope, Jesus, hope. Hope in Jesus never disappoints. Yes, you're hurt right now. Yes, you've been let down and you want things to be better. But will you trust the good Lord today? Will you do it with me? Just trust him. And whether you pray right now or whether you pray when you get home tonight, will you just say, Lord, I, I, I don't get this. I, I really don't. And I have some questions, Lord, and I don't want to be better. And Lord, I, will you help me? I, will you help me just trust you? Will you do that today? We just say, Lord, I'm, I just have to trust you. And you know, he'll even do that for you. So you trust him today. Lord, I'm not doing this on, I'm not doing this on my own anymore. I'm going to trust you. Give it to him. And watch your strength and your spiritual life begin to come back. You're not fearing. You're not anxious. And the desire, what it is that you wanted to do years ago, you're going to start to dream again. And it's that hope that's not deferred. It's right now, today. It's right in front of you. Jesus Christ is our hope. And he will give you a way to live that when you get a taste of his living water again and again, you won't want to try and figure out life on your own anymore because you'll have seen the Lord come through in an unbelievable way. Father, we love you, Jesus, because you first loved us. And uh, Lord, I know there's visitors here today that maybe you don't have a clue about some of what I talked about and they don't know where to begin and they don't really know you or anything, but Jesus let them know that if they're willing to step out of their seat, if they're willing to step out when we give an invitation, just a minute, I'll pray with them. And all they have to do is trust you and believe. <laughs> ah, Lord, believe without a doubt to know that you died in the cross for all of our sins and that you rose from the grave and your blood that was perfect was shed for us. And if they trust you today with their life, you will give them eternal life, but you will give them a, the abundant life in this world that we live in today, right now. Father, if there's someone here today that is in that place, as we stand and Jimmy leads us in an invitation song and let them know they can come just as they are. That's all about your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with us?